they expected us to have no chance. When Senator Lee endorsed us, he said he's back in a campaign that had um, was impossible to win, improbable to win, now unstoppable. Because we know it's not about Greg or our team, it's about, yes, oh, I hear it. The individual understanding that they're superior to the collective. And there's a clear, clear distinction. So my love of life, my love of my oath by not wavering, no matter how I'm attacked with arrows in the back and not swords in the front, I will never sell my integrity, not even for a Senate seat, not for anything. The truth must always be sold. Because the truth is what we have to stand on. So again, this week was just a beautiful time. And then today, talking to the Valley, I go, thank you. Can I just go first, please? Because I'd like to get back and get a little sleep tonight. And uh, in case of that, goes to labor, because I have surgery tomorrow morning. But by, by being a servant, is, that's what I believe I prepared as a surgeon. After high school, I spent 15 years training before I had to scalp my house with my hand for the, by myself for the first time. And I was completely in charge with nobody over me. We're running for a job. And on this side, in the primary, I believe if I did not prepare like I did to be a surgeon, to deliver babies, this precious life, there's two babies, the mommy and the baby in my life, or the triplets or the twins. If I did not give all I got to study as hard as I possibly could, would you trust me in that position? If I did not give that same passion and energy to this Constitution, why would you want to vote for me? Because I'm a nice guy. See, this is why it's important. I believe we're in the position we're in because men like Lee, Cruz, and Paul stand out for a couple reasons. First and foremost is they know that Constitution, backwards and forwards. Number two, they've never held elected office ever, ever. They served in other ways in the community and then found this thing falling apart where they gave given their time. Senator Lee lost his house. This ain't about putting money in your bank that truly served. That's what makes these men stand out. And that two of them back me is just the complete, complete honor. But again, I, I, I do believe it's arrogance if we're running for an office or in office like Ms. Hagan and do not know Article 6, Clause 2, do not know the Bill of Rights, do not understand that every issue we have is because the federal government usurped their power. I don't care what the topic is. In these so-called debates that are actually formed, which really just shows, every issue is because in Article 1, Section 8, the function we're discussing is not there. And the only way to get rid of it is to go back to that contract, hold the agents accountable to that contract, because you as individuals and me, we are the source of the power. That's what makes this job so much fun. So I want to know why we're going to vote for somebody. Because that was my problem. Was I did not really look in the years I voted on who we were. That's why Reagan stood out. Everybody here quotes Reagan. But listen, what did Reagan really do? What he what he fought for? Again, when Senator Lee endorsed me, he said, we gotta stop talking about Reagan and act like Reagan. We gotta not waver on these truths. Compromise, cross the aisle. That I call compromise on core principles. That's just defeat. That's not who you are, what you're supposed to be. So I wanna make a, a couple of clear distinctions between myself and Mr. Tillis. Because in this in the form of Davidson, on May 25th, 2011, he bought a bill, House Bill 115, to the floor for a state exchange. Don't care what he says now about what the word conservative is, that's what he did. Senate Bill 479, he signed that put common core to law into this state. Don't care what he says now. He had energy. He believes in climate change. Look at the thing about the state doing it. He's forced a 21 and a half percent green mandate on future energy needs, which has cost the state so far for uh, 4.2 billion dollars over the last seven years. We also have the highest tax on gas in the southeast. So if those are conservative principles, what party is that? How does that delineate differently from Ms. Hagan? But also back to Obamacare. I think I think the issue of our time, Obamacare, before I get to that, toll roads, 1.6 billion for toll roads. The Spanish company they took, look at their record. Moody dropped their uh, their uh, rating. They have 1.1 billion in debt. Ask Indiana, ask uh, Texas what happened with them. 
You do not take a road paid by public funds, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1, I'm getting boring, but it's there, with excise taxes that pays for a road, then you give a lease to a private company. They'll, they'll put money into it, but they're not putting money into it not to make money. They're giving them a monopoly with the power of the government, our purse, to give them that lane. Look what happened in California, the Riverside Freeway. I lived out there. They had to get out of the deal by giving them more money back. See, that's the problem we are, is every topic we're talking about, again, is because the government left its chains, according to Jefferson, according to Madison, few and defined functions, Madison, over here to do everything. These so-called questions again, these forms are, what about X, what about Y, what about Z? They all assume if the federal government does not do it, it won't be done. We didn't have schools before the federal government. We had the best school system the world's ever seen into the federal government. <laughs> well, we're not gonna have health care? We're in the process that your employee, your employer, should pay for your health insurance in the first place. Why can't they pay for my car insurance? That's next. They buy my house. Yeah, we joke, you're right. They, they want us to just keep be on the beck and knee of the federal government. With our money, the government does not produce anything. It just takes. Now Obamacare. Somebody in the team said, but actually every, every opponent in the primary said there's certain things in it that are good. Like 26 years of age, your kids stay home and get your benefits, pre-existing. That is a scam. The pre-existing one word changes to the plan is gone. And if you do not meet certain criteria, like you have a, set, a certain medication for a liver or kidney, and doesn't meet their criteria, you don't get it anyway. So see, there's nothing good in nationalized health care. Mr. Tilla said there is. But we can't afford it. He said the Burr plan is a good framework. The Burr plan is Obamacare light. It's still nationalized, mandated health care that's no enumerated functions. Our party has a chance to blow this away by standing on the truth. We don't waver. They have to, they have to come and explain to us, to us, why the Constitution is outdated. The same contract that gives the power for their position, the same contract they swore to uphold in Article 6, Clause 3 that had their oath, that same contract is good to chain us for our taxes, but not chain them to the oath. Shame on us. Shame on us. Exactly. And I love the great question I had in Davidson about the Second Amendment. <laughs> and Mr. Mr. Tillis said, if I heard Greg correctly, and I was clear on the next question, he did not hear me correctly, but I think his canned answer was ready for that. The establishment people believe they can fool us with these symbols of the NRA or whatever. Look at the Gun Owners of America, look at the National Association of Gun Rights, and see who spent more money fighting for the Second Amendment last month, the last spring, versus the NRA. Just look at that, number one. And look at they back reading through the pressure happened. Okay, just look at those things. But the question was really, this is where I think Tom and I, or anybody in the opponent, and Ms. Hagen, are clearly, the distinction is black and white. I go back to the Constitution, whatever my answer is. It's not my opinion on anything. I'm just saying, I'm plagiarizing the Constitution. <laughs> I plagiarize two things all the time, the Constitution and the Bible. That's just the way it is. The question was very clear. Where is the, you have to have, you have to have context or where you go back to. The Constitution, well, first off, the Declaration of Independence is our, I like the word birth certificate, but even more than that, again, you've heard me say this a hundred times, it does not declare that England should be free, it declares why men are free. It declares who is sovereign and what the legitimate government is. That's our philosophy. I've been hammered by uh, opponents that Greg always talks philosophy. Without philosophy, you can't have anything else. Who are you? Right. Right. How do you have any character or courage or anything standard? We don't know who you are. So that's our philosophy. Eleven years later, our second constitution had to incorporate that philosophy or the anathema to who we were. 
So those six pages have to express those. And that's a contract. The preamble has zero legal power. It's just a summary introduction of what the body's gonna say. That's we the people. In fact, Henry hated the word we the people because he said, how dare you? How dare you speak for us? It's we the states. But Mr. Governor Morris actually wrote the Constitution in the Committee of Style, did not know which states would approve it, so to make it simpler, they put we the people. So it's really we the people in the states. How do you know that? Because in Article 7, it was each state got one vote. That's really important to know that. And that shows what's going to happen. So the general welfare clause, that kind of stuff the progressive used to go to that, garbage. No legal standard. Then the Constitution is six pages, which is the body of the contract, which limits the agent's power and function. And then the Bill of Rights summarizes anything that may have been lost there, not completely unarticulated. If you want to look what the Bill of Rights stands for, I always say the Bill of Rights declare not one right. It does not grant one right. It declares God-given natural rights in which the federal Tom, the federal Tom, the federal Tom has no power at all. So, if you read the preamble to the Bill of Rights, this is Greg's summary of it. It says, you people in the future, be very, very where we're right here. We're writing this declaratory statement to say what we're writing here is expressly exactly what we mean. There's no implied powers, none. This limits you. We were that way for 100 years. Our founders, the anti-federals, worried about men that would actually take this contract, pervert the words, and put us under them, not over them. And we're seeing a hundred years that come to fruition today. So back to the Second Amendment. The first law, Tom, of natural law is self-defense. Personal security. Without personal security, you do not have personal liberty or personal property, Tom. So the Second Amendment says the federal government cannot infringe on those rights. You, as a citizen of a state, if you break laws, that's called the police powers of the state, that's their function, and that's the sheriff. And I was clear on that. That's the clearest thing to do. Every answer being said in these so-called debates, their answer is the rule of men. That's the mistake. It's the rule of law. And the rule of law is only a rule of law, constitutional, if it is based in God's natural law. And that's our country. So again, me, one of the servants, preparing for, the, I think, two of the biggest issues of our day. The economy, which I didn't want to talk about yesterday on TV, so what did I do? I read every word of Dodd-Frank. I don't use an eclipse in these little debates. I read it. I read it. The summary introduction of Dodd-Frank is scary. It says, with the inherent instability of the economy, the inherent instability of capitalism, that was the problem that led to the fall. The problem was twofold. The government regulations do the subprime loans, but more importantly, it's the Fed the Fed printing money like water with inflation that kills us. My joke is, and it's not a joke, there are six crimes in the Constitution. Treason, piracy, counterfeit, and the Fed does all three. That's <laughs> what led to our fall. They took, they took a government-run problem. They caused that collapse because the elites who had the top of it, they made money on that deal. They took the TARP money, which is our money, to the elite banks themselves. <coughs> I'm going to ask Ms. Hagen that. How she gave a bill that gave foreign banks three trillion dollars. They took a government-run problem and formed a, a bill that is about 890 pages with 16 titles. that will control hedge funding, how banks invest. How our own private companies, where they invest, Title 15 talks about if you invest in the Congo, you must let them know. That's foreign policy. That's not the U.S. Treasury. 
Nobody on our planet is self discussing. That's why our debate should be a Douglas, Frank, uh, Lincoln Douglas. See, me asking them questions and them asking me questions. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I do with the economy. Well, thank you. That's what I do with the economy. Again, it goes back to how could I serve if I don't prepare? Back to Obamacare. H.R. 3200 was the first bill. I read that. And H.R. 3590 was the bill that passed. I read that. They took a government controlled problem again to do what? To come on in there and let their buddies make the money. And who pays it? You, me. It's the worst regressive tax you can. Because the poorer you are, the more you give a percentage of your money to a private entity. The plan I measure, I memorized was the silver plan. $33,000 a year gross income. Well, you bring home 27, 20,000. Of that take home pay, you must give an exchange. Blue Cross Blue Shield is the only one in our state other than four counties. I think it's First Carolina. So basically, the monopoly owned by the government gave a monopoly to Blue Cross Blue Shield. Ask Tom. And then <laughs> they must give Blue Cross Blue Shield for a silver plan $4,750. You must give that. Then your 70 30 plan, so you gotta have 30% you gotta pay and you pay a copay, and then you're allocated from the bronze to the platinum, the lower the plan, the less healthcare options you get. That's what the pre-existing is a joke. That's America? Oh, I forgot. Congress and their friends are exempt. Yeah, they're, yeah. yeah. I forgot that. So are you. did not forget that. In his 57th federal paper, he said that will never happen in America, ever. Because Congress and their friends must live in the laws they pass. But who holds them accountable? Again, I blame yes. Hamilton in the 35th paper said, if your person does that, your congressman, when they come home, important. Because you cannot stop a congressman from travel. Or in their home, have the sheriff arrest them. <laughs> so I wish we had a real debate. <laughs> yeah, I too. So what I want to do, guys, is I'm challenging us. We're on the precipice. We know what our internal polls are. We know Tom sure does too. We are going to win this on May 6th. We, not me, we are going to win this on May 6th. But bring 10 people. Bring 50 people. You get there going. This Hudson has to win. There is no doubt about it. Woo! To replace, to replace Tom in this district, and have retired, but actually said he'll, he'll be on the finance committee whoever wins the, the primary. I'll have Tom, it'll be fun to have Tom on our team. So that would be the job. So what we want to do here is this. And again, every time I talk about Tom or Miss Hagen, it's never personal. It's all policy. It's all non-emotion. It's policy. If you believe in big government or big government lights, that's those two. That's why his commercials use the word conservative. Senator Lee and I were talking a couple weeks ago. He goes, Greg, isn't it funny that every election cycle the word conservative is popular? Or now the big word is the constitutional conservative. And I go, well, Mike, that's what I put on my ads. Because I know, and you are one. So, so, but again, they use it. I say, no, we, after hearing Mike Tom's commercials, I vote for him how good it sounded. You know? But you know the truth. The truth. Government is not the answer for so many of our issues at least at the federal level, at the federal level. Education, so here's a statement I said at, the, at, at Davidson. This is the part we're missing a lot with our children. Are our children creatures of the state? Or are they gifts from God? That's a hugely different perspective. I don't have to train our workforce and our children from K through 12 so we have companies come to North Carolina. Let the parents not able to educate them so they can invent the companies. They can be the farmers. They can be the bakers. They can be the guys that think outside the box. Not mandated green health care, uh, energy. You know, not those kind of things. America, in North Carolina, there's a data collection system for our public school children. Data collection. It's called P20W. There's over 400 data points about that individual child. The state collects from pre-K to the workforce, and Tom did not get rid of it. See, this is 
the part that we cannot have a committee that say, well, what about Common Core? We don't have a committee on Common Core. It's a federally function. How do you know that, Greg? It's from the Governor Association. That's a trade organization. They're using federal money to bribe us with our own money. And that's what the Gokul said in 1836. America will fall the moment the government realizes they can bribe the people with public's money. That's moving the plunder around to keep them in power. That's why we keep our own income, our own money, our own labor, our own children. You know, it, by policy and education is whatever you decide your education. Policy and health is whatever you decide. But the structure is, that's not the federal function. And this paradigm shift that, again, you get hammered on these, these liberal things is like, well, Greg, you want people to starve? No, I love them so much, I want them to keep 100% of the money and dictate what they want to do in their life because I know society's better when the individual the individual makes every decision, good or bad, good or bad. But right now we're working roughly through, through April for the federal government, let alone the state. So that's what makes this race so exciting. I was tired of throwing things at the TV. I was tired of my, I was tired of my, my the best part about this is my, the people that are happy the most are my kids. They don't hear me pontificate at the dinner table anymore. You know? <laughs> You guys don't listen to this, son. You don't have to. So, but we're on the precipice of making history on May 6th. So, I'm honored I'm here. Again, thank you very much. I'm not going to answer any questions you guys have. But go vote now. Prepare. If you go vote early, that gives you time to get people out on, on polling day. We'd like our team to show up there. There's 2,000 polling sites across the state. We have it on our webpage to plug on in. iBackRandon.com will plug in that area. But this is the time where talking must end this is where the work has to go they're banking on us doing a lot of talking and staying home they're banking on the kids and the colleges to talk and stay at home they're banking on all of us to say okay it doesn't really matter uh-uh no this is our lexington and concord this is our bunker hill this is our time to shine to make history because 30 years from now those 50 year olds that are look back and thank us Thank us or not. So let's be bold, let's be strong, let's be courageous, because we know who made us in our in his image. We know the legitimate government. We know this is our time. Thank you very much.